Good afternoon everyone. In today's video, we are going to be looking at tornado season outlook for 2023, whether it'll be uh, below average, average, or even above average season this year. We're going to be looking at a lot of things that could signify uh, the potential for this year's tornado season. And as you can see, this is the average tornadoes by month uh, from 2002 to 2021. Uh, on average and as you can see uh, starting off with January and February usually it's quite slow with severe weather season mainly down in the south this year however already 168 reports for just January and we've also had a lot of tornado reports here in February as well so uh, so far for the winter part of the tornado season already been above average uh, so we're gonna have to watch for the rest of the spring season here uh, of course those prime months are uh, march april and may uh, for strong tornadoes and don't forget about june and july we're also uh, prime months for tornadoes across the plains this is a tornado report trend uh, just for january like i said 160 reports just for january the average is 52 reports in january you don't see that often uh, for especially January, it's usually a quiet month for severe weather, uh, but we do get a few outbreaks of severe weather due to those winter storms. Um, and uh, this is tornado reports for March 2022, uh, last year. So it's March 5th. We're uh, about four days into March. Last year, we did see a lot of reports, especially down here in the south of uh, those tornadoes. We saw even up here in the Midwest, a lot of tornado reports as well. We uh, saw a very strong tornado last March in Iowa, Southern Iowa, and going to Central Iowa as well. Uh, some tornado reports down there in Florida. A very active March last year, uh, especially for the Dixie Alley area. Texas even saw some tornadoes of last year. I think we're gonna see the same amount this month, um, if not a little bit more, uh, mainly down here in the South, even some up here in the Central Plains. Uh, we might see a lot of tornado reports up there this year then last year's march the average tornado risk area for march is uh, down here in the south uh but we do have occasional severe weather events that might bring a tornado risk or two up here north so into that midwestern area ohio valley area going up to oklahoma kansas also has uh, that threat for tornadoes as well uh, throughout the month of March that will only increase as we head into April um, and as you can see we head into early April we see a greatest threat appear here across the southern area still a lot of this view where they're happening down the south uh, throughout early April a lot of those tornadoes happening in early April are going to be down in the south uh, but as you can see, this starts to move northward into uh, more Illinois, Indiana. Uh, we start to see some northward movements at the Kansas, even portions of uh, northern Missouri there. Could have a bigger risk of those tornadoes for the average tornado risk area uh, for early April. Then we had into May. This starts to shift a little bit westward. But in recent years, it's still been all over the place in uh, May here across the south, Central Plains, uh, pretty much everywhere across the Midwest. Uh, throughout last year's May uh, was a very active uh, tornado May type of month. Now, actually, last year we didn't have a about 300 reports below average for tornadoes, so it wasn't a super active year. But we saw some, we saw a lot of tornadoes. We saw some damaging tornadoes, but it was just slightly below average for those tornado reports. Uh, now we're going to get into the scientifics of this. Uh, last year we saw a inso neutral, uh, I think, where it was a late week La Nina for the spring. I think it was a neutral though that we saw for the spring months. Uh, and this did lead to, of course, some below average uh, tornadoes for a couple weeks at a time. Uh, so I don't know if we're going to see that this year. We are going to see inso neutral for most of the spring this year as well. Uh, going to the summer, we're going to see also an inso neutral, of course. We're going to see inso neutral according to the Climate Prediction Center as well. Uh, but it looks like we are hinting towards an El Nino for possibly uh, next winter. So we're going to have to look out for this. This is the SST values uh, for the Central Pacific. And as you can see, we are mainly seeing above average SST values. Uh, we're seeing slightly above average uh, SST values for more of the eastern portion of this. We're seeing a lot of above average SST values 
across the western region. This is where you could tell if it's going to be a La Nina, if it is currently a El Nino or an Into Neutral, which we are heading towards an Into Neutral right now. We're still in a El, we're still in a La Nina status uh, for right now. But as you can see, uh, this uh, is a loop and it is getting a lot more warmer over here in the Eastern Pacific. So we're going to have to continue to monitor that throughout the summer months see what happens uh and but as you can see it is getting a lot more warmer that could lead to an el nino uh in the fall now here's the sst anomaly cdas nino 3.4 index uh this is showing uh, pretty much the dips and rises of going towards a uh neutral status and going down to more of a la nina so down here is a la nina up here is an el nino uh, pretty much this is near a neutral status so 0 0.5 if it's if it's inside that 0 0.5 we're right near a neutral status so right now we are definitely heading towards that neutral status we're probably going to see that in about april we're going to see that neutral status uh, be announced from the climate prediction center um and we're going to have to watch us throughout those summer months uh, to see if we could even see that el nino status which we haven't seen an el nino in a long time i think the last el nino was in 2018 to 19. so 2019 i started making these videos i started this youtube channel uh pretty much the lifetime i've been forecasting uh for about uh, this year will be four years. It's been mainly El Nino, so it's kind of real interesting here to see a switch into an El Nino pattern. Of what difference it will make for forecasting uh, these these patterns for the seasonal months. Now, lastly, we're looking at the climate.gov. This is uh, the tornado slash hail frequency index. Um, and this is the El Nino influence. So this is what it would be like with the El Nino. This is the La Nina influence. So what it would be like with a La Nina in place for the spring and summer months. Uh, La Nina influence, we could see above average tornado activity across the central United States. El Nino influence, below average uh, tornado activity across the central United States there. Last year we saw a neutral status, so it was uh, quite hard to forecast the average for tornadoes last year. Last year was just below average of what I was expecting. Uh, this year, I do expect an average tornado season. Nothing super crazy in, to, in terms of total uh, tornado reports. Uh, as we are going to be in that neutral status, it could either be above average or below average tornado season with that neutral status. Uh, of course, we are going to see that La Nina exists throughout most of spring here. So uh, La Nina, of course, bringing above average tornado activity across uh, the central united states so i do expect some above average tornado activity throughout the spring uh some below average tornado activity throughout summer heading through fall maybe a few uh tornado events going throughout the fall months but really we're gonna just have to watch it play out uh and make sure you do have those tornado plans in place uh build a tornado kit you can go to several different websites uh that will uh, give you tips on staying safe from a tornado you can buy a weather radio uh, to keep you safe uh, and keep you warned uh, with watches and warnings issued by the National Weather Service. It'll go off uh, with just batteries. So just batteries. It'll keep running uh, during a power outage. So uh, that will be your key components uh, to being safe in severe weather is getting a weather radio. So stay safe this tornado season. We will have those uploads and live streams this a tornado season as well. As always, I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe.